Hi, Bruce Ford here with Molly Bear Farms in Carnation, Washington, and my wife Amy behind the camera. Uh, I want to show you a little bit about um, what we like to carry for our lambing season. We try to load up on uh, this prior to, um, to when we get going and go through each one of these with you as to why we carry these items. And these will be on a spreadsheet um, that comes with the presentation as well for your future reference, as well as where you can go to get these items. Um, and I'll go ahead and preface that a little bit by saying uh, Premier One is one of the first uh, stops that we have to get a lot of these items and other items in working with sheep, including fencing, um, etc. But there are others out there. Pipestone is another, and I list those also on the reference page uh, that lists the lambing supplies. Um, so first, uh, when the lambs are born, um, we, in the mom's water, we'll put about a half a cup of molasses in her cold water and stir it up to give her a little boost after she finishes lambing. And that'll go in the lambing jug with her. Um, when she's done lambing, uh, we'll give her a couple of aspirin after the afterbirth has, um, after she's um, past the afterbirth two aspirin and a little bit of uh, concentrate to uh, help her with the pain. Um, with the lambs, one of the most important things is that they get colostrum early. Uh, we like to get it in them at least 12 ounces within the first, um, I will say 50, or 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, after a short period of time, after an hour or so, their intestines uh, are not as readily acceptable to the colostrum from the mom, the first milk. And so that's our, our one of our main missions for being there uh, lambing is to make sure they get the colostrum and they get it early. Um, if they, you know, you put your finger in their mouth and it's cold, you probably have a lamb in stress. Um, we will go ahead and milk uh, colostrum from the mom and we will tube the lamb and, and provide uh, about 15 ounces of colostrum. Uh, through that tube into the lamb and then put them back under the light and many times that's all they need to uh, gain the energy um, that they need to survive. Um, we do not hesitate to uh, to tube the lamb and so it's important to have at, at least a lambing tube and a large enough syringe to get that 15 to or so ounces into them. Um, needles. Uh, we have a uh, section on uh, shots that we uh, provide uh, to the lambs when we ear tag and when we um, uh, put the uh, uh, rings around their uh, tails to, um, uh, to take care of the tails. I like to use a, about a 12 um, size needle or so for the lambs. It's also good for the use. Almost all the injections we give are sub Q. Um, so these work great for that. And then a small syringe that's up to, you know, say around uh, three milliliters. I uh, will work for the lambs and then I use a larger one on the ewes when we're deworming and such. Uh, rubbing alcohol uh, for the needles primarily. Um, the other thing that comes right at lambing is uh, iodine on their, um, uh, help me, honey, their navel. Umbilical cord. Their umbilical cord, thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. um, and so this dispenser is great for that. It also hangs on the fence outside the lambing jug. You see this one has been well used and well loved. Um, uh, you fill this about halfway up with the iodine. Uh, it goes on their umbilical cord. Tip the, um, the uh, dispenser up. It fills the canister and then wets that whole area around the umbilical cord with iodine. Day and it works like a charm. Uh, while we're on the subject of umbilical cords, I'll jump ahead to dental floss. So if you have one that bleeds and won't stop bleeding, uh, they make types of uh, string and, th and sutures and things like that for that. Really all you need is just some dental floss. Um, in our six years of lambing, we've never had to use that, but um, it is handy to have and easy to have on hand if you do need it. Um, hydrogen peroxide, uh, we use that for um, if we need to towel off the lambs, maybe the mom's not doing a good enough job in cleaning uh, their backside uh, from excess poop, 
um, which is very important by the way. The new moms are bad at it generally. The older moms know what to do. Um, so we'll put this on a towel and clean with that. And then if one should get into trouble, um, and it's only if they are, you know, to save a lamb, we will give uh, the proper dosage of LA-200 leucomycin. Um, it's nice to have some of this on hand. Very rarely, rarely have to use it, um, but it can be a lifesaver if you need it. Um, back to the birthing process. Um, if you're concerned about the presentation and you have to go in um, to check presentation on a lamb, to assist in, in the birth, uh, rubber gloves, and good old ivory liquid soap. Um, the ivory liquid soap helps uh, not only lubrication, but also helps uh, prevent um, an infection down the road from you having to go in and, and check and, and assist. Next, uh, we have an aspirator. So this is a handy tool when the lamb's first born. If you get one, especially if they're breech and you have to pull it, um, it they're generally covered in a mucus uh, heavy mucus and not only toweling off and rubbing straw on it, but this is really good to stick down their throat and to suck out mucus and also suck out mucus from their nostrils. Uh, very handy. Um, so we like to um, keep, you know, a small little soda bottle like this, um, a 10 fluid ounce and a uh, Pritchard uh, teat on hand. These work great. They last for years. Um, you just clip off the end to to uh, make it work. And these little bottles are so handy. Um, half of this, uh, well, I'd say a little bit more than half is enough colostrum to get a lamb through. And sometimes, um, especially when we have triplets, uh, she may be having the third one and the first one needs um, uh, colostrum. And so we'll milk her and go ahead and give uh, enough colostrum to uh, tide that lamb over until she can attend to it. Also, um, I'll mention about these bottles. Sometimes when we have a mom that, that has a single, we'll milk uh, one side of colostrum and fill up one of these bottles and freeze it for either later in that season if we have a mom that can't milk or want, for whatever reason can't get colostrum in a lamb, uh, to have a colostrum from our own farm, from our own ewes um, is critical. And so we uh, we will try to store and always start a lambing season if we can with a few bottles of last year's colostrum uh, when we can. Um, if we don't have that or in an emergency, um, I've had this bag for a couple of years now. Um, this is uh, just, it, it's basically bovine colostrum. Um, it will work in a pinch. It is not as good as our own flocks colostrum as far as giving the antibodies for our farm and what's needed but it um, will do in a pinch and it's, it's handy to have a bag of that on hand. Um, crock pot, really to take care of the last few things, when we, um, we'll have one of these running in the barn at a low temperature, um, pretty much for the duration of, of lambing uh, season. We'll continue to put water in it so we can just pop a bottle down in it, but it's just to heat the bottles um, for two reasons. One, if we're going to administer colostrum out of our freezer, we'll heat it um, and have it ready to go should we have a lamb that, that needs it. And the other is when we um, have one, maybe a mom doesn't milk and we have to move to a milk replacer, uh, this is where we can heat the bottles of milk replacer prior to administering them the several times a day that you have to bottle feed uh, the lambs. Handy to have a thermometer on hand. Uh, I've tried several types, you know, the $3 thermometers, they may last a season. This is a little bit better. It may be a $5 thermometer, uh, but it's lasted for two seasons. So, but make sure it works prior to lambing season. You got batteries in it and you're good to go. Um, uh, lambing rope. I think we got this six years ago, have never used it. Um, it's on my list of things to have. Uh, not saying anything against having a lambing rope, um, but when we pull, and we do have to assist um, occasionally, and when we do assist, um, we, we generally will glove up, and uh, if we have time, and we will um, we will pull the lamb without using any type of, of other um, device. Ear tags. So we have our scrapey registered, flock registered ear tags, and an ear tag applicator. 
Um, these work pretty easily. Um, I'll just give a little quick demonstration. Um, so the this particular end goes directly in front of you into the ear for our, for sheep. I'm not sure how it is on cattle, but for sheep, we are um, uh, providing a ear tag in the right ear for ewes and the left ear for rams. It helps us identify in the field which they are. And um, once this is applicated uh, between the two veins in the ear for the the uh, lamb, um, then you just simply unhook that. Uh, this is already in the ear. Pull it back and you're done. Okay. And you also soak those in alcohol prior to putting them in the ear. Thank you. Yes, we sure do. Uh, I just like to have it as sterile as possible. Um, one thing to mention about the tags, they can be ordered again um, from a couple of different places. Uh, we order ours from Premier One. Um, they used to come free, um, but not anymore. And they contain our flock number. So this is our Scrapey registered flock number. Um, so this identifies our sheep to this farm. So if one ever developed Scrapey, um, we would know where which farm it came from. And then the second number, the 0183, is the flock number here. So that identifies the sheep's number. We register our sheep with the Suffolk Sheep Association and um, they receive a Suffolk registration number as well, and that follows them with their flock number throughout their life. Next we have, and we touched on this a little bit, but we have the rings to band the tails. Um, so this is, this we also soak in al alcohol as well prior to administering it. Um, it goes around uh, right up to the divot uh, in the center of that, and then expands enough to pull the tail through and extend uh, almost all the way to the rump of the lamb. And lastly, um, this is a little trick that a kind oh, shepherd oh, showed oh. me is just to give the, the lamb's gut a little head start. Uh, we give them um, uh, two mils of a uh, probiotic uh, to get going. Uh, for our size, one of these will do about 20 lambs. And that is about it. Um, we will uh, continue with one more video to show the lambing jug and how that setup is. Uh, before we go over there though, I did want to again say that uh, Premier One is where most of this came from. Pipestone is another um, area that's really good or another company that's very good to get mail order medicine. Sometimes you have to have a uh, vet's um, uh, prescription to get it, but it's a very, our lambing jug setup. Um, we like to have you know, somewhere in a six to by 10 area for them. Um, we also, for some of the larger, um, uh, say larger groups of lambs, like if we have triplets, which we have quite often, or if we have quads, which we had a, a set of quads last year, we may use a 12 by 12 pin. Uh, but this is the general setup with um, a feeder that has a divider so that the, uh, some of the alfalfa leaves can drop down in the bottom, um, an area for the lambs to retreat to with a light, an area for mom with her water bucket, so she can attend to the lambs. And after the lambs are born, generally a few hours after, we'll let them settle in and eat a few times, but we will weigh them uh, using a hand scale and a cradle um, for the lamb. It's very important to get a weight in uh, a few hours after birth, but I like to wait until they are comfortable milking and everybody's happy first.
the towel and the aspirator. See you blinking. That's right, sweetie. There you go. Good job. Yeah. Look what you did, Mama. Good job. Here's the penicillin shot first with two mils. It's okay. So we'll doctor the lambs and then we'll give her the city tea shot. Cool. And and hold both lambs out. Yeah. So she doesn't get too up. All things considered, she seems to be really good about um being like she's not really crazy in there, you know. Sub Q injection. Oh no, sweetie. Okay. It's all right. It's killing the right ear. Left. You see the ram? Oh, left. Okay. You're okay, sweetheart. Yes. And that'll damn pill. I'm gonna clean that pill first. I was gonna say we might want to wipe it first. Towel with some peroxide on it. Definitely a new mom.
And now he thinks I'm his mom. Mm-hmm. It's like, ooh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for if you get a close up of that tail when I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh it's so good. Where to so the band goes right around the notch on the expander. And it's been soaked in alcohol. Yep. That's right. And this can also be used for castration. We don't castrate ours because um, we slaughter it about six months before sexual potency. So you want to go almost to the end of the where the skin mm -hmm. um, comes out. Okay. And we'll pull it through. And in about... What do you say, Jack? About four weeks? I'd say so, yeah. The tail drops off. It hurts them for about 20 minutes. It's like cutting off the circulation on your finger would hurt. And after 20 minutes, they feel pretty good. <laughs>